Ray popped the cork on another fantastic Mavericks victory. We have got something to celebrate here. The Dallas Mavericks, after a sluggish start, go into to Toronto, into the defending champion's house, after a slow start, and whoop their ass to a final score of... Uh, what? What? Oh my god. Okay. Alright, for real though. Uh, this was a Jekyll and Hyde game if I've ever seen one. Like, if I have ever seen a Jekyll and Hyde game, that's what this was here. The Dallas Mavericks, man, they got off to a pitifully bad start in the first quarter. They start out the game shooting 2 of 16 with 6 turnovers. Again, this is a team that takes care of the ball. I really wish I did not drop my phone off the desk at this point. Takes care of, excuse me, the ball better than any team, any other team in the league this season. And they commit 6 turnovers in the opening minutes. Toronto builds a 12-point lead before the game really even gets going. Uh, for the Mavericks, man, they started 0 of 11 from the field. I mean, it's really bad. With three and a half minutes left, they had six points on the game. I mean, it was bad going offensively for Dallas. This is a team that averages 30 points in the first quarter this season. And I think they just have a stupid record like 14-1 and one in games like that, where they score at least 30 points in the first quarter. And they managed just 17 today. But in spite of that, they were right there. I think they were down something like 20-17 to 17 after the first quarter. And they ended it on an 11-3 run. Uh, Steph Curry, man, or excuse me, Seth Curry, I wish we had Steph in this game, was atrocious throughout. Tim Hardaway Jr. really struggled as well. And when both of those guys struggle, the Mavericks in general are going to struggle. But as we're going to get into in a bit, it wasn't just them. I know Curry's part of the bench. The bench in general was trash for Dallas in this game. But uh, what, what really turned it for Dallas in, at the end of the first quarter was... Uh, the second unit did come in, and they did play well. They were able to get the offense steady and get things going. They threw a little bit of zone against the Raptors, and it got things going. DeLon Wright started strong before fading very, very badly, but he did have five points, two offensive boards, uh, one for one on three in the first quarter. That helped kind of right the ship a little bit for Dallas here. Excuse me, while I still try and process what exactly happened, I'm going to take a moment to, in a non-sponsored way, let me make sure the label's not facing... Uh, take a swig of this scotch. Ooh, that's some bite. All right, so the lowest scoring quarter, the lowest single scoring quarter for the Mavericks this year was six points, which they accomplished in the fourth quarter at New York. So it's not good that you were echoing that and that you were only one point better. Puts you in a hole to start the to start the game. But where Dallas really seized control then was in the second and third quarter, respectively, because Dallas came out swinging. Between the end of the first quarter and the second quarter push to open, you saw Dallas really assert itself and take a fairly commanding lead, like a 16-4 run over the, minute of, over the span of four minutes between the end of the first quarter and the start of the second quarter. They opened the second quarter with that second unit, and... Even though Seth Curry at that point was shooting 0 of 6 from the field, don't worry, it only got worse, they were still in a good position. And they were able to take a lead. They took a lead pretty, it looked like it was going to be for the rest of the game, honestly, with the way things transpired. But Dallas took a lead. Toronto's last lead had been 39-20. Dallas pushed past that. And KP had knotted it up with a 3 at 32. And then they started pushing the lead out and go into half up 51, 42, 42 points. And by the way, before I even throw that fact out there, KP's pump fake pull up three from the logo at the buzzer was just nasty, nasty business there from KP. Dallas takes a 51, 42 lead at half. Um, 42 points is the lowest scoring half for the Raptors on the season. So you look at things like that and you're like, damn, dude, Dallas came out to play. And then the third quarter started and you're like, Damn, dude, Dallas came out to play. Dallas opened up the third quarter on a 9-2 scoring run. Now, the, the Raptors get a quick layup there from Lowry, and then Dallas goes nine quick points. Suddenly, it's 60-44, to 44, uh, 14-0 run at that point, dating back to the start of, 
Uh, yeah, 14-0 run at that point, not dating back to the second quarter. This is all purely in the third quarter, this 14-0 run. And they push the lead up to 20 points until you finally get a, a jumper from Serge Ibaka. And that run just kept going. Like, even though Toronto finally kind of broke the streak, Dallas still pushed a 21-6 edge at that point. KP was sitting on 14 points, 11 boards, and Dallas was up 27 points midway through the third quarter. Like, they were in firm, firm control of this game. And at this point, I was texting back and forth with a buddy, and I was like, you know, this is going to be what snaps KP's 2010 streak. He's got four straight games like that in his career, the longest such streak of his career. It's going to get snapped because they don't need him in the fourth quarter, it's looking like. Well, they did need him in the fourth quarter, and it still didn't matter, unfortunately, um, as Toronto would come roaring back. Now, Dallas got its lead all the way up to 30 points towards the very end of the third quarter. They led 86-63 to 63 through, three, or through three quarters. That's a 27-point lead going into the fourth quarter. There is no excuse for Dallas in this case. I'll, I will say it. There is no excuse. This is a, a horrific, worst-in-franchise-history collapse in the fourth quarter. Dallas... At that point, KP had 27 minutes played, 15 points, 11 boards, and a couple blocks. They were outscoring in the middle quarters. I think they outscored the Raptors like 69-43. Like, they were destroying Toronto. Toronto in the first half was like 4 of 24 from 3, and it was really bad in the third quarter too. And it flipped. Excuse me. They were, I think, 3 of 18 in the first half. And then in the third quarter, by the end of the third quarter, it was 4 of 24. So really, really bad three-point shooting from Toronto, but that just wouldn't hold up. Now, a couple other notes here. The Mavericks, it was their seventh, this was their 17th straight game making at least 10 threes, which is a franchise record. Shows that the Mavericks, as much as the NBA has moved towards this new age and new analytics and all of that, you hear the Rockets talked about in that regard. You hear the Golden State Warriors talked about in that regard. The Mavericks have embraced that, and they are thriving in that. But it all came unglued in the fourth quarter. Toronto started doing some things that really affected Dallas. They started hitting them with the full court press. They were trapping the ball handler regularly. You could tell it completely took Dallas out of its flow. It made them very hesitant and reluctant. You saw some turnovers in those situations. Dallas wasn't getting as good of shots as they should be. And in the fourth quarter, I mean, the, the Raptors bench went nuts. Like, legitimately went nuts. Um, Boucher was was ridiculous for them in that regard. And that's that's what it really was. Uh, Dallas could not stop them. Kyle Lowry woke up and went nuclear in the fourth quarter as well. The Raptors flipped the script. I mean, they they claw all the way back to take their first lead of the game since 32-29. So not first lead of the game overall, but since 32-29. They clawed all the way back with 320 left to take a one-point lead. They then pushed that to 101-97. And it was ridiculous. The Raptors had like a 12-0 run at one point, I noted, or an 11-0 run, I noted, at one point. And the Mavericks bench was unable to do anything. They couldn't figure it out. Hardaway continued to struggle. Curry continued to struggle immensely. Um, just the second unit in general. DeLon Wright really struggled in that regard as well. The best players for Dallas in this game, KP, his streak does snap. He scores in this game. Uh, it's on the board there behind me. Seven, or excuse me, 19 points. 12 boards, and three blocks. He knocked down two big free throws that actually gave Dallas the lead with 32 seconds left. Dallas lets Toronto go right down the court, though, take the lead back, and they would never recover. So that sucks because that was some clutch shooting from KP for a guy who has somewhat struggled at free throws this season. But the Raptors' zone defense really, really bothered Dallas in this. The full court pressure and everything really got them out of sorts. You saw a lot of guys with uncharacteristic turnovers in that regard. And it was just an avalanche, as Mark Followell put it during the broadcast, an avalanche of momentum for Toronto. This is the biggest blown lead in Mavericks history. It's the biggest comeback win for the Raptors in their history. And it kind of echoes back to me, if, as I think about this, to like 2005, 2006, when Dallas was down, I think, 25 points at Toronto and came all the way back to win. So maybe this is just karma playing out on the other side of that finally. But Kyle Lowry, I said he went nuclear in the fourth quarter. He had 20 points in the fourth quarter. Like, the guy was buckets. The Raptors, who started four of 23 on threes through three quarters, at one point in my documenting of just kind of keeping track of things, they were they had made eight straight threes in the fourth quarter before finally missing a big one. 
Uh, Jalen Brunson, for his credit, he ties a season high with 18 points on the game. Actually, no, you know what? He, this is no, excuse me. That was the note I had at the time. He actually surpassed that because he gets an and one later and makes the free throw. He had a season high 21 points in this game. It was his third game this year with 15 plus points, and he he got it cut to one. And then KP gets to the line after they finally the Raptors finally miss a three after making eight straight. Hardaway Jr. knocks down a couple free throws, and Dallas is just hanging around. They're doing all the stuff you need to. I did know one thing here. That Dallas gets a big stop again on defense with under a minute left, and they still struggle to secure the rebound, and that's really becoming a narrative in the past few games. For Dallas, you have these moments where a big rebound's there, and they're giving it up. And KP, while he's been rebounding great this year, he's letting some guys get past him. The, the Bucks opportunity he gets the block on the play but it was his man that wrapped around and got the offensive board and thankfully kp blocked it so we didn't really talk about it that much but kp in this case he's getting pushed he's getting bumped out of bounds but he's struggling to secure the rebound and while a raptors player looks like um hollis jefferson does get a fingertip on the ball it looks like maybe just maybe the last touch is off kp so there you go it's it's a critical maintained possession for toronto in that case and kp would answer it immediately with another big block so to his credit he understood like hey i should have had that i should have snuffed this out immediately but here i am making up for it at least and that's huge but dallas Dallas made a couple of mistakes here. I think it was Hardaway in this case. After the KP block, tried to push the ball up court, tried to throw it down court. And there's a whole, you know, garbled mess under the basket, under the Dallas basket then. And it's ball Dallas, thankfully. That's huge. But that was a really, really dangerous pass at a very inopportune time. It's a one-point game, and you're throwing it down the court in a mess under your basket. Like, you got 32 seconds left, dude. You got time. I understand feeling some urgency, but I feel like that's one of those places where I don't know if it was in the ball handler's mind there of like, hey, they've been throwing a lot of pressure and a lot of traps at us. I don't like that. I'm bothered by that right now. So I'm going to try and push the ball up court and get it out of my own hands because they can't trap me if I don't let them. Maybe that flickered through the mind a little bit and that led to a very dangerous pass that nearly undermined the entire comeback. The Dallas then comeback after the Raptors' massive historic comeback. I don't know, but regardless... KP on the inbound pass, a better pass, and maybe KP fields it cleanly, and it's a dunk. It's an and one dunk, perhaps, but he recovers it. It's a little bit of a loose ball, recovers it, goes to make a move. Lowry comes over to try and strip it from him, fouls him on the arm as KP's trying to go up. Two shots, KP knocks down both to give Dallas then a one-point lead with about 32 seconds left, and unfortunately, Dallas gave it right back right the hell back. Lowry just goes right down the court and uh, dishes to uh, Bouget, uh, Bouget in that case for the game-winning bucket, essentially, because, yeah, Jalen Brunson on the final Dallas possession, he gets a great look. He gets a damn great look, a look that that he had knocked down earlier in the game several times, a look that he's knocked down probably a thousand times or more in his playing career, both NCAA and in the professional ranks, and he just misses it. He misses it. Dallas can't recover the loose ball. They foul, and the Raptors close it out at the line. Dallas, Dallas is outscored forty-two to twenty-one, or sorry, forty-seven twenty-one in the fourth quarter after holding the Raptors to legitimately holding them to what was it? I had the mark here, uh, sixty-three at that point. I mean, it, it's it's baffling. It's baffling how Dallas allowed this to happen. It really is. Uh, yeah, 63 points is what Toronto had after three quarters, and they dropped nearly 50 in the fourth quarter to beat you. Now, you can put a lot of blame out here. A lot of people are going to want to throw stuff at Rick Carlisle, and they're going to say, hey, this is all coaching. This is inexcusable. I agree that it's inexcusable, but it's not all purely coaching in this regard. The players have to perform better. Dallas has one of the better benches in the league, and they flat out laid an egg in this game. Uh, going down the ranks here, let me let me run through this real quick just to give some perspective on this. The bench scoring for Dallas was not good, and it hurt them very, very badly in this case. And my phone apparently hates me now and doesn't want to load after I did that. But, uh, oh, here we go. So Dallas for the bench. DeLon Wright, five points. All in the first quarter, buddy. 
Seth Curry, one point on 0 of 7 shooting, 0 of 4 from the field. He did make a free throw from a technical and a couple turnovers in 18 minutes. Gross. Gross. I, I, I sang your praises the other day when you had not one but two huge performances for us. This was crap. And I, and I know you know it's crap, so it's not even like it's not even like I'm breaking news and saying that. But I, if I'm going to praise you, I got to come back and I got to, you know, be fair and criticize you in this case when you struggle. Ryan Brokoff, see, uh, his season high last game against the 76ers. Some people wished I had called that out better. Eight points for him there. Six points for the Mavericks here in the second quarter, all in the second quarter. Fouled on another three, knocks down all three free throws. Only one of four from the field and all three three-point attempts. Um, all three of those four attempts. All three of those four attempts, am I that? He missed three out of four. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't know why I got tongue-tied on that. Not good enough in that regard. For Brokoff, yes. That's more than good enough out of him personally. I'm just talking about for what Dallas needs in terms of as we go down the list of the bench, not good enough. Uh, Maxi Kleba, seven points, five boards in 15 minutes. Three of nine from the field, one of three from three. Bulbin got in for a couple minutes uh, in the second quarter as well. You had KP and Bulbin check in at the same time. He gets an immediate post-up bucket for, excuse me, not a bucket. He's fouled and makes one of the two free throws. Gets a couple boards there. Dallas's bench was nothing here. I mean, we're looking at 6, 12, uh, 19, 20 points out of the bench. There you go. A bench that usually gives you about 40 a game minimum, or excuse me, on average, gave you 20. They gave you half of that. That's the problem. The starters, you got 19, 16, 21, 14, 17. That, that, that's what the difference was. Toronto, as they got going in that fourth quarter, it was behind. Yes, Lowry was magnificent in that final frame, but the Toronto bench... 18 points out of Hollis Jefferson. 21 out of Boucher. Uh, Davis gives them nine as well. I mean, really, th- those three guys by themselves more than outperform anything the Mavericks did. More than double them up in this regard. So that's that's the game. That is the difference right there. The full court pressure. The, I'm, I'm going to say it. I, I think Dallas was so clearly not prepared and didn't make the proper adjustments to deal with the full court pressure the traps, the zone looks and all of that, that it completely threw them out of their rhythm. And even though you still had some guys step up and make some big shots for them, Dorian Finney-Smith had some. Uh, Hardaway had a couple in the fourth quarter as well as they were hanging on. Brunson really had to take over and almost pulled it out of the fire. KP made some big plays. It just it didn't come together, and the guys were rattled. It, it seemed, Dallas, they've had a tendency to do this this year. And I understand it's the NBA Big leads don't necessarily hold up. In fact, I would say more often than not, they do whittle away. But when you're talking about giving up 50 points almost in the fourth quarter alone, yeah, that's going to happen. You're going to you're gonna have that. You're going to lose everything in that regard. It's a game at that point you didn't deserve to win, even though if you had asked me 12 minutes earlier, I would have told you this might be one of your finest wins of the season. This is, this is really going to be hard to swallow. Thankfully, I think it's going to stick in the craw as well of the rest of the team. And I think that the, that will help Dallas take... Uh, a, a, b- a bounce-back game as the day after Christmas. They have to play at home against the Spurs. I don't think Luka's back yet. I think Luka's probably going to come back early January. It might be the 29th. It might be the last game of the year for the Mavericks, but I think it's going to be pretty close in that regard. And if you look at how they did through three quarters, they don't have to have them back right now. But in that fourth quarter, when you needed to regain control, Brunson had a good game, man. Brunson, 21-9-4. Like I don't want to, I don't want to railroad him. I, I've been harsh on Brunson lately. I fully admit that and acknowledge that. Now I would argue it's just that I've been harsh on him. But he had a very good game here. He missed a shot that was critical. Uh, there were a couple times where he didn't make a great play, but you know, considering everything else he was doing, I still think the positives outweigh the negatives. Certainly, he he steadied things in this game and kept Dallas in it in the waning moments after Dallas looked like it had just completely fallen flat on its face and had no answer for anything the Toronto Raptors were throwing at them. This loss sucks. Not just the historic collapse, but you factor in, they didn't have Pascal Siakam. They didn't have Marc Gasol. They didn't have a whole fleet of guys, not vleet, fleet of guys that they normally have. And guys that are big contributors for their team. And yet... They did the unthinkable in one quarter. The first quarter until the final three minutes and a late flurry was a nightmare for the Mavericks. The fourth quarter, God, if the first quarter is a nightmare, I don't know what you call the fourth quarter. Uh, A nightmare you can't wake up from, I guess. 
Like it, it was really, really just a gross loss to suffer in this regard because I, I don't know how easy it's going to be for the team to respond after this. Um, I think that they've got the character in the locker room that they will respond, but they're going to have to, they're going to have to really rally around each other a little bit here and basically take a look at themselves and say, okay, how did we let this happen? And now we, we have to understand we, I've said before, and this is it's not like it's conventional newfound wisdom from me. This has been said all throughout sports history, basically. You learn more from your defeats than you do from victory. We'll look back at the Milwaukee game a couple games ago. In the blink of an eye, in about a minute and a half, you gave up a 13-point lead almost completely. But you know what? You still won that game. And so you didn't really absorb the lesson from giving up that lead. Maybe this... That run for Milwaukee on steroids, maybe that finally sinks in for this team. And they're going to look at this and they're going to say, dude, I don't care if we're up 50 with half a quarter left. We keep being aggressive. You keep attacking the basket. You keep your foot on the gas because there is no excuse for losing a game like this. Maybe now the, the message that didn't fully sink in and process with them before, maybe now it will. Because, yeah, Dallas had been road warriors this season. They were 11-2 and two on the road this year, and this should have been one of their finest road victories of the year. Instead, you're, you're still 11-3. and three. You're still road warriors. But, man, this, this is... This is the kind of loss that should, on some level, stick in the back of your mind if you're a Mavericks player for the rest of the year because now you know no lead is safe. No lead at all, at all, at all. So I don't know what else to say, guys. This is this is uh, one of the more disappointing losses of the year. Now, it's not the kind that makes me you know, violently ill, basically, like the Knicks losses were. Um, but this is one that's going to take some time to calm down from. It is what it is, though. We're going to roll with it. Just hang tight. Stay off the ledge. I know how Mavs Twitter in particular has a tendency to to creep towards that ledge anytime we suffer a frustrating defeat. It's okay. We're still 19-10. and 10. I believe we are still fifth in the Western Conference. And we'll be all right. Like, the the growing pains that we're going to have to go through right now, and we haven't really had to go through that many growing pains without Luka. I mean, you could look at it as kind of three losses now without him since he barely played against Miami. But you still got wins in Philadelphia and in Milwaukee without him. And to go two and three through that stretch without him to this point, considering how harsh the schedule was, is not bad. You've proven yourself a quality team. Don't cling to that ledge. Don't certainly don't go off the ledge. Uh, reinforcements are coming. Just hang tight and uh, we'll be all right, man. Just hang tight. Spurs are in a free fall this year. We'll see how we do on the 26th against them. Luca nears his return uh, for whatever it's worth. Yeah, I mean, you guys have probably already seen this. Luca is signing. It looks like a five year deal with the Jordan brand jump man. And uh, so no, no exclusive sneaker coming for him yet. But uh, we got a lot of things to look forward to for the Mavericks because maybe he does eventually get that signature shoe deal in that regard, and suddenly you're looking at it and you're saying, dude, this is how polarizing and superstar-focused the rest of the league is looking at us now in Dallas and what we got. Future's bright. Hang tight. That's going to do it for my time, though, guys. Um, I don't know about you. I got some work to do. This bottle was much closer to full before that fourth quarter started. So that's all my time. I've been DDP. Uh, don't forget to like this video, leave a comment below, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect, and until next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Salute. Oh, God, it hurts so much.